Buenas tardes, good evening, bonsoir, buonasera. Bienvenidos, welcome to the second session of the program, The Romance, a Shared European Cultural Heritage, where we are no, allowed heritage. to present three more Roman towns that show the common cultural heritage, material and immaterial through Europe. Today, we are going to visit Taraco in Spain and Nimes and Autumn, the twin cities in France. This lecture of the evening is Urban Archaeology in a Historic City, Virtual Reconstruction of the Roman Provincial Capital of Taraco, with Dr. Jose Alejandro Beltran Caballero. This will be a different way to approach Roman uh, heritage through three-dimensional visualization of Taraco, a Roman city in northern Spain, that you can find also in the Taraco 360 uh, the great uh, website, where you can discover the Roman Taragona of the second century before Jesus Christ. Going beyond the mere cataloging of the archaeological remains and presenting a complete picture of the missing buildings and their importance in the city plan. Let me to remind you the importance of the Roman heritage in Europe. We had been uh, going through uh, the ruins in, in London last week and also in Pest in southern Italy. Uh, the Roman civilization brought us so many things, Latin, this, the, uh, the languages we share, most of us in Europe come from uh, the Latin, the Roman language, and also there are infrastructure that are still being used in uh, 2000 years after the Roman. So it's a great heritage and you, we thought that it would be uh, interesting and important to share with you. Before we start, let me introduce the, our speaker, the first speaker. The second one will be introduced from Xavier Labri, the director of Alliance Frances. Now, Jose Alejandro Beltran Caballero is an architect, PhD in architecture at the University uh, Politecnica de Catalunya, an associate researcher at the seminar on accent topography, Setopant, and also lecture at the University Rovira y Virgili in Tarragona. As part of his research field, as ancient settlements concerning water management and landscape interpretation. Dr. Beltran Caballero was visiting a scholar at Stanford University who has lectured in Spain, Italy, the United States, Colombia, and Peru. He also collaborated on projects on the virtual reconstruction on archaeological sites in Europe, Aragona, and also Rome, and in South America and Cusco in Peru. Finally, I have to, uh, you have any questions, we, we would like uh, uh, you to share it through our chat box where you can uh, put uh, the questions. And then uh, we will have 10 to, five min uh, to 15 minutes where our, when uh, our Lee and Carlos with, uh, from our cultural teams will be asking uh, then to Jose Alejandro. Thank you very much uh, for uh, being there. It's a great honor for us to have you as an audience. And uh, without any further ado, I am delighted to give the floor to Jose Alejandro. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind presentation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. For me, it's a, a pleasure to have the chance to talk about Tarragona. Um, uh, the work I'm going to present uh, to you is part of a wider investigation aimed to study the architectural and urban history of one of the most important Roman cities of uh, antique Hispania. I'm going to share with you a presentation. Okay, thank you. I'm going to, uh, the presentation is going to be uh, part of the, of, 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 um, I'm going to show you some images of Tarragona. I'm not going to comment all of, all of them. Uh, some of our illustrations of the work we are doing uh, of the reconstruction of the Roman provision capital of Tarraco. Uh, Tarraco was probably, um, the first Roman settlement laid in the Iberian Peninsula. Iberian Peninsula at the east of the Mediterranean, the, the Mediterranean Sea. 
And it was set up at the end of the Tony War long, long ago. It was born as a military base uh, that finally became an important city that is still exists today, is the actual Tarragona. Our work is the result of more or less 30 years. And I want to clarify, I'm part of the research group. Uh, the director of the, um, of the group is uh, Dr. Ricardo Mar. He was not able to, to, to show you all his work. And uh, he uh, asked me to, 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 to show you all of this. And um, it's been uh, the attempt to propose a coherent framework in the aim to explain and maximize the result of over 300 archaeological excavations. So we have a lot of material that are that have been help us to show or uh, to propose the image that we that I'm going to show you today. So here is the Iberian Peninsula. This red dot is more or less the location of Tarragona. Uh, this is the map of the ancient political um, uh, distribution of the of the of the peninsula in provinces. And the, in this map, you see uh, the, 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 the position of Tarragona uh, by the Mediterranean Sea. So this is this is this is uh, this is Tarragona today. So you have uh, this is a modern city. Uh, this is a common European city. Uh, this is the Mediterranean Sea. But the 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 ancient Tarragona is this uh, this uh, piece of the city surrounded by this um, um, white line. This is the ancient Tarragona. So the origins of, I'm going to show you some images of the, of the heritage of the city. Uh, I want to illustrate the, the, the amount of, of, of materials we have to, to talk about the city, to talk about the reconstructions. So the origins of Tarragona correspond to an Iberian sediment, a very ancient sediment um, that um, it, the, when uh, Romans arrived to the peninsula, um, to the place where 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 Tarraco is right now, uh, they share they share the the, the, the space. The both settlements coexisted uh, throughout the second century BC, while Rome was conquering Hispania, and a civil population grew in Tarraco to control uh, the economical management of the conquered territory after the Punic Wars. So uh, a large Finally, finally, a large Republican, Republican city was founded at the end of the second century BC to integrate the two settlements, the pre-Roman and the Roman settlement in a single defensive compound. Thereafter, Tarraco had been continuously increasing its important, importance and population until the time of Augustus, when it became the capital of the province Hispania Citeria. Uh, archaeological data uh, of ancient Tarraco uh, began to be collected um, by the antiquary tradition uh, uh, of the Renaissance, uh, you know, five centuries ago. However, the foundations of modern scientific knowledge of the Roman city were placed uh, first by the work of local archaeologists in the 30s of the 20th century. Uh, then by excavations accomplished by the German Archaeological Institute, for instance, in the 60s and 70s, and finally by the activity of local uh, research groups uh, of the municipal or, uh, organization uh, during the 80s, more than 300 points of modern city have been explored in the last 40 years. Uh, those archaeological excavations with remarkable findings, some of, some of those you are, you are watching right now, precious information has remained buried for, buried for years um, in administrative records, like, may, like in many other uh, European cities. Each excavation provided a small fragment of that ancient city that could not be interpreted by itself. It was necessary to put all data 
um, got, yeah, okay, here I'm going to show you this because this is important to see that you see this city today, this is Tarragona today. I showed you before the demarcation of the or how, or where was placed the ancient Tarraco, but here you have what I'm talking about. You have a lot of uh, archaeological remains all around the city, but if you take just one of those archaeological remains is going to, give, to, to tell you a particular story, a particular part of the, of the history of the city. But if you put all together, you are going to have the, the you are going to have, if you put all in a single document, you are going to have the chance to, 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 to analyze and, and interpret the architect, the, architect, the archaeological remains in a in a complete in a in a whole. Obviously, the, the the mere placement of data in a plane was not enough to give an archaeological context, incorporating all kinds of findings that we could think uh, uh, that we could that, sorry that we could uh, link uh, with every identified antique building. Every column, I showed you some, showed some in some image before, uh, cornices and capitals and moldings and carved stones and marbles that belong uh, to the missing facades of all buildings were drawn in the aim to understand, on the, in the aim of, of its understanding as part of the missing facades of all buildings that then were drawn in the aim uh, to achieve a virtual model to explain the final outcome. So, uh, modern computers became an instrument capable of enhancing the value of an interpreted in, uh, of an interpretative work. Work. This is the this is the map I'm talking about. We have those those remains, and now we uh, thanks to those remains, we can we can uh, propose how was the the urban layout of the city. So, uh, wait a second. I think this is a missing. Okay. So I want to I want to start to talk about uh, the civic center of the city. The identification of the urban network, uh, the urban plan of the city that I, that, I talk, that, that I talked before, also provided a vital data to define the shape and boundaries of the Republic Forum. We are talking about this piece of the city. We have the, the, the image of the contemporary city, this is Tarragona today, and we have put over the remains and the reconstruction of that uh, ancient civic center. Uh, the uh, there are some excavations here. Here is one. Here is the other that shows that the, there was a part. There was a temple. Uh, there was a basilica, and the evidences um, the evidences suggest the dedication to this this place to the Jupiter Capitoline. I'm going to show you some, some images of this temple. Uh, as I told you before, this, um, this city started by the, more or less by the uh, middle of the second century BC. Uh, so in the Republican time, uh, the first temple was built in this place. And then with the time this temple was uh, changed. This temple changed, uh, but it was the Jupiter Capitol in Temple. Um, although it is still lacking an architectural inscription to provide a, 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 a certain uh, dedication to this, to this divinity. This religion dedication is also indicated uh, by different uh, body inscriptions, different materials founded, discovering in, uh, founded or discovered in this area. Um, so the second uh, interesting um, in, um, building is the Basilica. The Basilica, uh, this is a Roman Basilica. Uh, it was a large, um, for saying something kind of hall, a big hall that was dedicated to um, judiciary uh, matters. Uh, this uh, this um, uh, Basilica, we have work in this Basilica, to try to give an idea of, uh, of the complete uh, building. 
there was a, 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 a relationship between the temple and this, and this uh, basilica. Uh, the Republica Capitolium was rebuilt in different times. And uh, something that is important for us is that the material found it help us to understand first how was the building we have we have uh, produced those images okay so i'm going to this because i have problems with the powerpoint i'm sorry there are some matches uh, missing so uh the work we have done here is to try to understand how those buildings work because uh, first uh, we have some uh, pieces of the building, we have some remains, but then we have other models all around the Mediterranean, the, the classic Mediterranean world that will help us to understand how those buildings were on Roman in Roman time. There is a second part of the city that is the biggest part of the, of the city where the Roman remains, we, we can find the Roman remains. And it's called uh, the Parte Alta. It could, be, it could be said that the upper town of the city. This upper town of the city was uh, divided in three terraces. The first one was the Circus, that is this one, this big structure here. The second is uh, the Forum, the farm is square. And the third is this, uh, this is square here that was dedicated to religious matters. This, uh, could, this, uh, we propose that this is the uh, Augustus temple. I'm going to start with this part. I'm going to go down to the, to the forum square and then to the circus. This is the image we have produced from uh, the materials we have we have found in excavations uh, all around this place, and this is a proposal we we, we do of how these um, spaces could be occupied occupied at uh, Roman time. You see, uh, we have um, we have we have sculptures, we have altars, we have uh, these those porticos surrounded this this uh, building. We have this uh, building behind our the 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 main temple, and I'm going to show you how these um, propose of. Uh, of reconstruction of these structures works uh, work. Uh, here we have the one of the walls of the ancient uh, porticos. If we, I'm going to show you this. I'm going back, and we could be talking of one of those walls. Here you can see the windows, and here you can see the window. So first, before we arrive to this to this place. We do this, we, 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 we draw, we, we, we see how these other species work together in this place. And so the constructive uh, technologies and we do all this analysis so we can produce with all these, all these images. For, for, to me, uh, this presentation, uh, I wanted to make, uh, to emphasize that our work is uh, uh, research work. We are uh, we are uh, scholars, uh, in, 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 so so we are not illustrate. We, we don't do illustrations of of of, of just for saying something. Uh, we try to we, we, we our work could be the more accurate uh, as possible. Uh, here is uh, the farm square. This is one of the structures. I'll, this is uh, an structure from ancient, from Roman time that is being modified from two. Uh, thousand years. So there are some parts that are still Roman. There are some parts that are from different uh, periods of time of the city. This is the this is the interesting part of all. I'm talking right now about Roman Roman city, Roman Tarragona. But you, if you visit Tarragona, you will see that Tarragona uh, has a lot of, of of history from 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 Roman until our days. So these uh, those are the vaults of uh, so th those are structures that are underground. This uh, this um, this forum square. This is the interior of the tower I, I showed you before. This is a Roman stair that now is, is, is transformed in, in an exhibition room. 
And the third uh, terrace that was the, the, the lowest is uh, this one related with the circus of the city. Uh, I want you to, to see, to pay attention to this part of the, of the, uh, of this compound. I'm going to show you is this part here. I'm going to show you uh, what, what is going on here. If you notice, if you see, you see that the facades have the same width, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's the, same, the same measure for same. And that is because every house was built uh, over one of those vaults from the ancient circus. You see here the ancient uh, concrete of the uh, of the circus, and each of the each of one of these houses were built over this. This is why you see in this in this plan this, the regularity of these of these houses here. So if we continue, you will see uh, you can find in a place like this, just a supermarket, just a, just a, just a grocery store, and you can, you can see Roman remains. This is a really a, a big challenge in, in a historic city to try to uh, preserve all those uh, remains in a, in a really and a very dense urban tissue. So uh, this is, this is the, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the um, this is, uh, those are the, the archaeological remains. And this is how we propose how this could work in uh, Roman time. Here you have, this is a super, uh, an overlap of the proposal we, we, we do in the, uh, how could this uh, is a circus uh, work and in relationship with the, with the, with the plaza, with the, this, this square today. Uh, this is other part of this circus we are talking about. And this is, this is, there are some uh, parts of the missing facade, the, the main facade of this building. And uh, this is other example of this work we have done. Uh, this is the theater, the Roman theater of the city. Uh, it's, it's a very, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to uh, go too far in the history of this place, but uh, those are the archeological remains we have. So I, I, I want you to notice the, the, the little amount of remains we have to, to, to do a reconstruction, a virtual reconstruction of, the, of, the, of this building. But uh, we did, thanks to, uh, there are some other uh, theaters in the Roman world. So we have very good examples. So since we have uh, things, we have those little remains and the other examples of Roman uh, uh, theaters, we do our proposal. Those are, uh, those are the old drawings we have done, but we have uh, used new technologies to uh, scan the pieces, to do 3Ds of the pieces, to incorporate, to put all together those pieces, the same work we did for the city. Uh, in, in putting all together all the, all the archaeological excavations, urban archaeological excavations, we do the same thing with buildings. We put all together all the pieces that we, we have found uh, about, uh, about, those, about those buildings. So we do this, we work not just with architecture, but we work with the, with the decorative um, uh, pieces we've, we've, uh, we have already found. And it helps us to understand different kinds of measures, different kinds of proportions, uh, to see all together how this building could work. Those are the archaeological remains. And you will see little by little how we have already. Here we have. Then we have these, those are those overlaps. We overlap the, the images. And the, the proposal here, you have the archaeological remains we have here, it, it appears, and then we do our proposal of how this Roman theater could work. This is the result. And this is what we have. So as you can see, the work we have done, and now we are going to, I'm going to show you the, the, the Tarraco 360 uh, initiative, uh, where we want to show you, uh, you uh, all uh, these 
this uh, this work in a more uh, general way. Uh, here I have the chance to show you more or less how we work um, from where we have already uh, do this this job. So I'm going to show you the. Uh, give me a second. Uh, okay, so this is Tarako uh, 360. Um, you know, uh, we sometimes uh, uh, drown for saying something in our research and our topics. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when, sometimes when we talk to people in general, uh, we, uh, when, when we go to an archaeological place, it's really it's difficult to understand how the, how the ruins uh, were in ancient times. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really complicated matter. So uh, since we are working in archaeology, but uh, we, are, uh, we are a public institution, uh, we have a commitment with the uh, diffusion of knowledge. We are, uh, uh, this is why we try to put in this Tarraco 360 uh, all this um, academic knowledge to the uh, to the um, uh, available to everybody. So if you visit the Tarraco 360, you will see that we have uh, separated in different topics because I have showed you just the, 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 the city of Tarragona, but outside Tarragona, you will see that there are some uh, different uh, structures. We have an aqueduct, we have um, um, a we have a, a arcs, uh, of, of triumph, triumph for saying something. Uh, we have uh, mausoleums. Uh, so there are different structures around the city, not just this, uh, this, this part I have already shown you. So uh, if you first, if you go to the to the to the main menu, you will see that the things I have, I have already showed you, you will find it in, in, in detail. Here you have the aqueductus. Here I have the aqueduct here. And this is the aqueduct of Tarragona. It's not near from the city center, but you, you, can, you, can, you can visit it easily. So if you visit this page, you will have, to, you will have the chance to, uh, to, to have yes, some uh, information in general uh, about what was the building, uh, what was uh, what are the examples you can find in other places of the Roman world uh, uh, of these buildings. You will you will have the chance to, for instance, uh, visit the reconstructions we have uh, done for the different for the different uh, structures, and the most the, I think the, the most interesting thing is that uh, it helps you to understand. Uh, the city, if you have the chance to visit Tarragona, you will have the chance to uh, see how this city works. Here you have uh, the first part I, I talk about, that was the forum. I, I really, I really, I really love this, the, how the technology help us to, uh, to understand uh, the archaeological remains. Because if you see this, this, uh, this uh, image, I'm going to do I'm going to see this, and this is the place right now. So this is a, this is an interesting tool. We have to show it to the to the to the to the public uh, how those ancient uh, buildings worked. Here you have it, and then you continue. You will have it all. So it's really interesting. I really invite you to. And then we'll see this. We can go to the theater of to the theater two. And a sec, a little bit. Okay. And at the theater, we can do the same thing. I'm going to be here, for instance. And from here, 
Of course, now this is the contemporary city. Now you cannot see how, you, how it's, it's completely, it's very, very difficult. But now thanks to these tools, you can see, you can see how, how these buildings work. Here you have it. And here you have it too. Okay. Give me a second. I want to show you. These are the examples I don't talk about at the presentation because here they have a very good material. This is an amazing place. Let me check. Oh, okay. This is a this is a mosaic at the roof. And it's really interesting that you have the chance to see it from here. Give me a second. Okay. Of course, this is the reconstruction we have done, but this is the current state of this tower. So what I uh, what, what I wanted to show you today is that uh, all this work. Uh, that was uh, that is presented in this in this web page uh, has a, a a a lot of uh, work behind uh, because it's related with the way we try to uh, make possible or to make it possible to understand uh, these uh, ancient structures. As I told you before, is sometimes it's really difficult to understand uh, how, uh, uh, how archaeology remains work. So these tools help us to understand this, this, kind, of, this kind of work. And I hope uh, we have, uh, I have already have the, the chance to show you some, some, of, these, some of these tools uh, we have already do. And I'm not really sure if I am, if I am to, I have, okay. Uh, if you want, I can stop right now and I, we can, I am open to, to questions or to anything you want to, to ask or, or comment, or if you have any, anything, uh, I think I, I can stop right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alejandro. That was amazing to be fair, like the reconstruction in the website, it looks very like, yeah, it's, a, it's simply amazing. Um, so with Carlos, we're going to ask you the public questions. So Pat is asking you how and when were the Roman temples and buildings destroyed? Okay, um, more or less, well, the matter is, you know, the Roman empire, um, for saying something as, an, as a political entity uh, was disintegrating, disintegrated by the end, maybe of the fifth uh, century AC. So uh, the, maintain, the maintenance uh, of, all, of all those buildings were related with religion. At the moment, the religion changes at the moment of the cult to the emperor is no more in the Roman world, those buildings begin to be abandoned, to don't be used anymore. And they became a kind of queries for new structures, for new buildings from the fifth century uh, AC until I could say until until our days for saying, for saying something, maybe not now because we have protection of heritage, but maybe uh, by the, 
by the end of the 19th century, some of those stones were used in other structures. So I think we could say by the end of the fifth, of the fifth century BC. Yeah, uh, AC, sorry, AC. Well, uh, Jose Alejandro, uh, we have a lot of comments. Uh, it's the amazing conjunction of technology and, and archaeology. But we have another, another question by Kinjiro. Well, two questions. The first one is, where did the Romans bring the building materials? And the second one is, with the computa computational reconstruction, would you be able to assess the performance of the built environment? I wonder if Romans built environment may be more sustainable than ours. Well, um, I couldn't say, I couldn't, I couldn't, I think I have not really, I couldn't say much about it. I'm sorry. Um, of course, there are a lot of studies about uh, Roman techniques of building, about uh, the amounts, uh, about the big amounts of money they spend it. I couldn't say that these, uh, that some of those buildings were really uh, environmental friendly for saying something because some stones, for instance, uh, well, you know, it's very complicated talking about environmental friendly uh, matters uh, with this uh, distance in time and this distance in economical systems. Uh, we are talking about a completely pre-industrial uh, society that was the Roman world. Uh, they brought uh, materials from all over the Mediterranean to build uh, the, to, to build uh, their buildings, to, to, to construct their buildings. Uh, you know, for instance, the columns of the Pantheon, of the Pantheon in Rome, that beautiful building in Rome, were brought from, from Egypt. Those the columns from, with columns of, uh, I'm not sure, maybe 50 meters high, and then I don't know how 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 many tons of, of weight they were brought from 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 Egypt. A lot of of marbles from from, from the from the uh, for the actual Turkey uh, from Syria uh, from from Libya. So the, so the matter is they brought materials from all around the the, the empire. Uh, so talking about. Um, in, uh, environment and, 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 and footprint and, and all of this, uh, to me, is a little bit complicated, uh, taking into account that, the distance in time and the difference of, of, of economical system. And the second uh, that was related with the materials, where the, the, the Romans uh, uh, brought the materials to build the city, uh, as I was telling, some of the materials were brought from other parts of the empire, but some were, uh, were uh, brought from a quarry that is maybe see, 20 or 30 kilometers from Tarragona. It's an amazing place to visit if you have the chance. We, we don't have here images from the quarry, but um, if you have the chance to visit Tarragona, there is an amazing place to visit because there is a still the quarry uh, um, to when you can see the amount, <laughs> the big amount of, of stone they have to, they used to build all those, all those buildings and build, and build the city, yeah. Well, thank you, Jose Alejandro. Um, Janet is asking, what was the origin of, and significance of the fish mosaic you showed at the beginning of your presentation? Okay, uh, the fish mosaic uh, is an amazing uh, piece of, 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 uh, of, of art, I, I, I would say, uh, I could say. And it was found in one of the, uh, the villas around Tarragona. Uh, see, uh, may, uh, I think you know uh, Tarragona, uh, sorry, uh, Roman cities were camp uh, places and there have uh, some uh, satellite for saying uh, villas, villas uh, for, for uh, leisure, but, the, but productive villas too. And we are in a Mediterranean villa. Uh, the idea of this uh, mosaic was to uh, bring inside the villa uh, the, the, the sea. I think this is the, the, that, that was the purpose of, of, that, of that mosaic in, in that villa. 
Thank you, Jose Alejandro. Uh, Pauline Howell asks, uh, would it be possible to use these wonderful techniques, techniques to reconstruct Roman cities in other part of the empire, or is it uh, only applicable to Tarraco? Uh, of course, uh, of course, this is a, this is a, there are, a, there, are there are very good examples of of um, of this kind of work in other part of the not just at the Mediterranean but in other cultures. Um, for instance, I, I'm going to talk about one of those works we are doing. We are working in Cusco, in Peru. And we are using the same the same methodology to understand the the Inca the Inca city, and we have produced a, rec a virtual reconstruction of the Inca city. So it is possible. Uh, the matter with this uh, kind of tools, uh, with this kind of technology, is that um, is uh, it would be good if we, if this technology uh, would be used. Um, in a scientific way, because uh, there are uh, this is an, a very powerful tool to understand how this city, this ancient city, this ancient ancient places or buildings worked. But it could be uh, uh, it could be uh, it could be misunderstood if it's not well used. So of course it's open uh, to, it's possible to use it in any other context, in any other, to any other culture, in, all, in, other, in, in any other uh, historic, historical time, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another question from Janet, who is asking about the Roman circus and uh, what would the Roman circus have been used for? Uh, I, but in Roman time or right now, or in, in Roman time, I think. Okay, uh, I don't. Maybe we have all seen Ben or the the, the movie. Uh, well, this circus uh, you you see it right now, right now, right here, uh, here up here. This circus has that that uh, that um, function. It was for. Uh, uh, Ra racing horses, horses, racing horses. Yes, for racing horses. Yes, in chariots like in Benur. It is not as big as the Circus uh, Circus Maximum in Rome. That is huge, maybe three times of the three times this. But it was used with this with this proper to the to the horses to, the, to racing horses and chariots. Yes. Thank you, Jose Alejandro. And Mary Steed uh, asked, was Tarragona the capital of the whole of Spain or just a province? Well, uh, the actual, I want to, uh, I'm going to talk about the Iberian Peninsula, that is the actual Portugal and Spain. It was uh, so, if we see the peninsula, a big part of the actual Spain was the Tarraconensis, that was a province. Maybe two thirds of the current Spain. Uh, the other third on the south was the Betica, that it was other province. And more or less what is now Portugal was the Lusitania, that is the third province of the Iberian Peninsula. Thank you. And Hilary is asking how much of the rubbed out Roman materials is in evidence in current buildings in Tarragona? And is there a survey of these? Yes, uh, I, I start by the end. Yes, there is a survey. Uh, I show you one of those plans uh, really fast. I show you uh, the survey has helped us to produce this material. Uh, it's, a, it's a very it's a very good survey because uh, we have a kind of uh, archaeological um, archives uh, where we put all the information of the archaeological studies we do in in, in the city, and um, there are some uh, of those um, archaeological remains in uh, that. Um, some of those archaeological remains are part of the buildings of Tarragona. I show you, for instance, in the, maybe I can show you here uh, at this place, at the circus, I show you I, in this part that I show you the vaults 
of the of the of the circus. So those 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 uh, the, the concrete of those vaults are the ba uh, the, 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 the 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 basis the basis of, of those buildings. Yes, for instance. Thank you. Uh, we have no more questions from the audience, but I have a personal question to ask you. Uh, how long did it take you to realize, to not to realize, but to create uh, those uh, reconstruction of the of the city? And with who did you work? Did you work with like professional video games or something like this? Or yeah, well, our research group is uh, is a. Uh multidisciplinary uh, group. Um, here we have, uh, I'm, for instance, I'm architect. I'm not archeologist, but I'm an architect. Uh, so from the architecture, we have uh, the chance to work uh, uh, on this, uh, this kind of, uh, of work. Uh, we have people uh, uh, related with, the, not with the video games, but the, uh, but the virtual image in general. Uh, illustrators, uh, we have worked with, uh, of course, historians. Um, yes, uh, very multidisciplinary team to produce this, this work, yes. Thank you, Jose Alejandro. We have uh, one last question by Rita. If there aren't uh, many remains of Phoenician rule of the town in the Roman foundation, is that because the Roman wanted to obliterate, obliterate it, or they want, or they were very little? Thanks. Okay, so um, at the Ponic Wars, it seems that uh, uh, this uh, Tarraco was uh, was founded as a military base. So the the Punics didn't really arrive to Tarragona. They they didn't settle in Tarragona. So they didn't, uh, they didn't, I, 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 I thought, that, I think that the question is about uh, Punix in Tarragona, if, I don't, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah it's, it's about okay. the Punix in Tarragona and uh, if they are. Okay, okay but Punix in Tarragona, they didn't, they didn't settle in Tarragona. Uh, they, there was a, there was a, there was a people before the uh, Iberians, the people, bef the Peromans, uh, in Tarragona, and there was not really an obliteration. It was a kind of fusion. Uh, it's a kind of, uh, because for instance, I did, I'm going to use this image for explain this. It seems that this part of the town was the Iberian or the pre-Roman settlement. And as far as you can see, this settlement, this part of the city was integrated in the, in all the rest of the Roman of the Roman city, so it was not really an obliteration. Uh, Romans arrived here and they found a people people who have uh, 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 be vineyards and olive and olive plantations and different kind of things that they have they, they can uh, they can produce too. So when they settle here, they settle up in this in this part of the the the. the the military uh, basement was base was here, and the Iberian town was here. And then, with the time, they they put all together in the in the in the city. I think this is a very good example, not exactly of obliteration, but but a kind of a fusion of those two cultures. Thank you so much all, to you all for your for your time, and thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We just Thank have you. one last question from our friend Angelo from the Società Dante Alighieri, who is asking if you are planning to print off uh, in 3D. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a kind of, of a 3D model, maybe a kind of uh, yeah. Yeah, a yeah. model. Well, uh, it depends. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the good thing about these virtual uh, materials is that you can use it in a different kind of, um, of a different kind of, 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 of uh, different kind of, of, of objectives. You can use it here in computers, you can use it at an exhibition, you can, uh, and of course, you can 
you can you can print it in, in 3D. We, we haven't done it because uh, it would be related with an exhibition that we haven't done yet, yes. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you again. It was a pleasure to have you. It was an amazing presentation. And I think now we are ready to go to the other presentation. Yes, hello. And so my name is Xavier. I'm going to introduce, I, I have the pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Vivian Barrière, who will now uh, present, talk about um, Nîmes and Autun. Uh, Vivian is from the Sergi Paris University uh, in France. Uh, thank you very much, Vivian, for doing us the, the honor to be present tonight to speak for the French part. So Vivian is a, just a short introduction to Vivian. Uh, Vivian is a classical archeologist. After studying at the Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris and the Pantheon Sorbonne University in Paris, he got a PhD in 2012 at the University of Burgundy in the field of Roman archeology. span His research focuses on the process of Romanization in the Western Roman provinces and particularly on urbanism and construction work. Since 2014, uh, Vivian has been Associate Professor of Ancient History and Archaeology in, at the Sergi Pai University. And in the same year, he became the Director of Archaeological Fieldwork and Project Manager of the Archaeological Site of Genainville near Paris. Um, tonight, so as I said, Vivian will take us to Nîmes and Autun and will explain why they are nicknamed the two, the French sisters of Rome. So Vivian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will share my screen. So um, first of all, I, I would like to, to uh, apologize to apologize for my bad English, very bad English. I hope you can uh, concentrate on the pictures uh, rather than uh, what I am uh, saying. <laughs> Thank you very much to the Alliance Française uh, de Manchester, uh, the Instituto Cervantes and the Società Dante Alighieri uh, for inviting me to, to, to participate in these conferences on the Roman heritage in Europe. Uh, now, in France, uh, we are commemorating the bicentenary of the death of uh, Napoleon. It's uh, probably not the best subject uh, for the English, Italians, Spanish and French to find a, a common uh, memory. <laughs> and it's perhaps more consensual, uh, more, uh, it's perhaps simpler to meet around a, a reflection on the Roman heritage that uh, we, we share. It's, uh, it's simpler to go back to those distant times when our four countries uh, belonged to the same union, uh, the Roman Empire. After the, the beautiful presentation uh, we have just heard uh, about the Taraco, the, the capital of the Roman province of uh, Taraconensis, I am going to, to talk about two cities with a, a more modest um, legal status. Uh, the city of Autun in Burgundy and the city of Nîmes in the south of France. Uh, why did I choose these two cities? Because uh, um, they have they have both been called the French Rome, la Rome Française, the daughters of Rome, les filles de Rome, or the sisters of Rome, les sœurs de Rome. So I would like to, to present to you how the Roman heritage of these two cities has been received, uh, how this heritage has been um, integrated or dismantled uh, during the centuries, but before that, I, I will first uh, present uh, the two cities, um, the ancient remains that they have uh, preserved, uh, that are still visible. Uh, the idea is to, to compare uh, the mark that Rome 
uh, has left on these two uh, cities. And we will see uh, that despite the astonishing similarities, uh, belonging to the Roman world does not remove local specificities. What we call Romanization, to be quick, uh, does not consist in imposing a single model uh, on all uh, the, the cities. Let's start with the, the situation uh, of these two cities and their historical context. Nîmes, Nemosus, it's located in the Roman province of uh, Gallia Transalpina, uh, called the Gallia Narbonensis, under the empire, uh, since the provincial capital was uh, Narbonne, Narbo Martius. Uh, Nîmes is a city founded by the Volcae Arecomici in the proto-historic period. Uh, the Volcae Arecomici are a Celtic people and they founded a town uh, around a, a spring and uh, hills. They fortified their town with a wall uh, uh, in a way that was uh, quite common uh, at this time. The Roman presence in southern, in southern Gaul uh, from uh, 120 before Christ uh, increased the commercial contacts between Rome and the, Volca the Volcae. And the city of Nîmes was in a, a very good position, both close to the river uh, Rhone and to the road uh, linking uh, Spain to Italy. Uh, there was a progressive romanization of the inhabitants of, of Nîmes and uh, during uh, Caesar's conquest of Gaul, uh, they became uh, faithful allies for uh, Caesar. They remained loyal to Caesar during the civil war against Pompey the Great. And this explains why in uh, 44 BC, Caesar, before dying, uh, granted the status of colony under Latin law to the colonia Nemausus. And that's why Augustus uh, granted the right to build a much larger wall, urban wall in 15 before Christ. The, the Latin law is a very convenient uh, status for Nîmes uh, because Nîmes keeps a, um, a great autonomy, a political autonomy and the city is governed by its own local uh, elites uh, who can um, who become uh, um, uh, Roman citizens at the end of their um, mandate. The city of Autun is uh, located in Gallia Lugdunensis, Gaul Lyonnaise. Uh, it's the second most important city after the capital, uh, Lyon, Lugdunum, the Roman colony of Lugdunum. Autun is uh, located on the territory of the Aedui people, one of the most important people of Celtic Gaul, uh, together with the uh, Arverni uh, in this place. Um, until the Roman conquest by Caesar, the Aedui had a vast and fortified site, the Oppidum of Bibract, uh, very near to Autun. At the end of the first century before Christ, uh, they abandoned this town of Bibract on the top of a hill to found a new town in the plain, uh, Augustodunum, Autun. The relations of the Aedui with Rome were good uh, for a long time. Uh, they were qualified by Rome as brothers, fratres, fratres populi Romani, brothers of the Roman people, because of a treaty uh, that they have uh, signed with the Roman Senate 
Senate uh, in uh, uh, the middle of the second century before Christ. The provincial capitals such as uh, Lyon or Narbonne have not preserved as many monumental remains as uh, Autun and uh, Nîmes. Um, this uh, phenomenon, this lucky uh, phenomenon, has a, a consequence. Interest uh, in the ancient remains of these two cities was early in Nîmes. Uh, it was early in Autun. Uh, there's a, a, a big number of scholars, historians, antiquarians, but also uh, architects, uh, artists, travelers, uh, and curious uh, people that have left us uh, descriptions, plans, views uh, of the Roman uh, buildings, of the Roman uh, remains. Another uh, uh, common point between Autun and Nîmes is the visit of François Ier, uh, Francis uh, the, the, the first, uh, in the 16th uh, century. It's uh, François Ier is a king with um, uh, um, a passion for the antiquities of his kingdom. Uh, and the, um, we have we have the testimonies of uh, his visit. Uh, um, this visit have deeply honored uh, and marked the elites of Nîmes and Autun. And it was uh, François Ier who authorized the people of Nîmes uh, to to change uh, the arms, uh, the 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 I don't know the. Le, le blason, les armoiries uh, of the uh, of Nîmes. You can see uh, here. The people of Nîmes uh, wanted a crocodile and a palm tree uh, because they wanted to use the iconographic theme of a famous Roman coin. This coin, coin has uh, two uh, two faces, uh, the emperor on the right, and his uh, brilliant general Agrippa uh, on the left. Uh, Agrippa, uh, Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, wears a crown uh, to, you can see here, to indicate that he has won a naval victory, the Battle of Axiom in Greece, and his crown depicts the, the, this part, the front of a ship. And on the other side, you have the uh, Emperor Augustus. On the other side of the coin, uh, you have a crocodile that uh, indicates that the victory uh, at Axiom was uh, won against uh, Egypt and uh, Cleopatra. And the col nem means colonia nemausus, the colony of nemausus. The croco this crocodile is still uh, the emblem of the city of Nîmes uh, today. Since uh, François Ier and Agrippa and Augustus. In Autun too, um, the, the city of Autun refers to the city's Roman past. Uh, first of all, uh, the name Autun. Uh, Autun derive, uh, uh, come, comes from Augustus and Dunum. Augustus Dunum means the fortified city, the strong city of Augustus. Uh, Autun bears the name of the emperor. In ancient text, several uh, authors like uh, Caesar, uh, Tullius, uh, Plutarch indicate that the Edui had a special status for the Romans, uh, an alliance be between Edui and the Senate of Rome, 
uh, like I said, they were called brothers of the Roman people. And in the 18th century, the city of Autun called itself a Celtic Rome, Roma Celtica, Rome Francaise, Rome Gauloise, a sister of Rome, Soror et Aemula Romae, uh, and it, she, it indicates that Rome was its model. This status of Autun, this antiquity of, of the town, gives Autun um, a weight uh, in the competition uh, with the other neighboring cities of Burgundy, like Dijon or Beaune. So being ancient is uh, a matter of present. Here are two old maps of Nîmes and uh, Autun. We will see the, the, the building uh, uh, remaining. For Nîmes, at the time of uh, Poldo d'Albena, who made the map, we have here the amphitheater, les arènes de Nîmes, you can see here, uh, les arènes, amphi, uh, the amphitheater. Uh, you have here and here the maison carré. Maison carré means a squared house. Um, it's a temple. Uh, one of the best preserved in the Roman world. Uh, and you have here and here, um, a building that uh, is called the Temple of Diana, Le Temple de Diane. But it's not a temple and it's not for Diana. That's a name. Uh, it's a, a mysterious building. Uh, historian, archeologist, uh, make hypothesis, but uh, for the moment, it uh, remains the temple <laughs> of Diana. You have uh, also uh, ici, uh, there, the um, Castellum Aquae. Uh, Castellum Aquae is a, a water uh, tower. Um, you can see here in the upper part of the town. And um, just near you have the Tourmagne. Tourmagne, Tourist Magna means the Great Tower. The Great Tower, the Tourmagne, is on the upper point of the city uh, wall of Nîmes. Here you are the uh, urb an, uh, urban gate. But on the map in the 16th century, uh, this Roman gate was then integrated in the royal castle, uh, which been uh, 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 district uh, after that. So uh, local uh, scholars um, celebrate the Roman character of their city. Uh, I, I will quote uh, Charles-Louis Clérisseau in uh, Antiquité de la France. He says, the monuments of Nîmes rank first among the antiquities of France. And there you have the Maison Carrée, Les Arènes, Donc, the amphitheater, the Temple de Diane, this mysterious building, uh, the aqueduct of Nîmes, Le Pont du Gard. Here you have um, a gate with one, uh, only one pass uh, that calls the Porte de France. You have here the Porte d'Auguste, a big uh, monumental urban gate with four. Uh, for uh, base, uh, the Castellum Aquae, 
to distribute water in, in Nîmes and the Tourmagne uh, here. And uh, for uh, Autun. Up. The scholars of Autun uh, think also uh, that Autun is the first uh, Roman place in France. Uh, we have two scholars, uh, De Vucou and Fontenay, uh, who said that the uh, Roman gate of Autun, this one, the Port d'Arou, was, the, uh, I quote, the most beautiful work left by the Romans in Celtic Gaul. It's a monument of the greatest interest, not only for the town of Autun, but for the wall of France. So there is a, a competition between scholars about uh, being Roman. Uh, it's logical, uh, Autun wants to be the soror, soror aemulaeque Romae, the sister uh, of Rome, the Roma Celtica, the French Rome. So here's the, la, the Porte d'Arou, Arou Gate. Arou is the name of uh, the, the river. Uh, you have the Porte Saint André, another gate, uh, very well preserved. You have here the Temple de Janus, which is a temple, but it's not uh, consecrate, consecrated to, to Janus. We ignore uh, which god, uh, for which god was it, the temple. You have in Autun the biggest theater, biggest Roman theater in France. You have um, a mysterious building. Uh, it's a, a pyramid, uh, la pierre de Couard, la pyramide de Couard. Uh, and uh, it's um, it's um, probably, very probably, a um, tomb, a funerary monument. And you have here a tower, uh, the tower of a gate, because these gates had uh, big uh, flanking towers here and here, here and here. Here you have it, but these towers were uh, um, were very, uh, very high, higher than the doors, higher than the gates. Uh, so let's see the two sisters of Rome uh, in France uh, and uh, let's uh, begin to the urban walls because there are a uh, strange uh, similarity six kilometers uh, of walls. Uh, it's the same, the same dimension and uh, the same chronology, uh, the Augustian uh, period. There are differences. Uh, it's not the same number of towers. They are not the same number of gates. Uh, they are not the same um, type of tower. But it's a, a common point uh, between Nîmes and Autun, the same uh, dimensions of uh, urban fortification. In Autun, you have the Porte d'Arou, the Porte Saint-André, La Tour, the tower of the uh, gate of Saint-Andoche. So uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, still three uh, on the four gates uh, of Autun. The Roman gate uh, disappeared uh, in the 16th century. And um, on the six kilometers of walls, uh, today we have still four kilometers, four to six. It's huge, there is no other place 
uh, where the urban Roman walls is uh, uh, preserved like that. In Nîmes, uh, six kilometers too, uh, but, uh, but there are still very, very big uh, things. This gate uh, is very important. She's uh, unique in France. Uh, you have four paths. It's the same like in Autun, but you have on the other side of the gate, you have an um, inner court. Uh, this uh, courtyard uh, makes uh, uh, an interior space surrounded by high walls uh, and it's, um, it's a security lock and it can, uh, it can uh, be used like a, a trap for, um, for um, a, um, uh, for um, a science, uh, we would have uh, forced the first, uh, the first line, the first door, the first gate. But it's also uh, a majestic uh, vestibule. Uh, we make the transition between uh, Urbs, la ville, uh, the city, and Rus. Uh, la campagne, the, the territory. Uh, no structure marks uh, better than this courtyard, uh, the, the place of, of, um, of um, um, the transition between uh, the city and the, the outside. It can be a, a place to control uh, the, uh, to the, the taxis, the tolls, uh, etc. There are not uh, a lot of examples that, uh, of gates uh, with an inner court. Uh, this one is preserved. Uh, it's La, La Porte d'Auguste. Uh, Augustian uh, gate, but we archaeologists find uh, uh, 30 years uh, in the past another one, uh, but uh, the walls are not uh, visible. Uh, another one with the same uh, the same structure. This one, with two flanking towers, four paths, and an inner courtyard uh, inside. I want to uh, show you something about the Porte d'Arou uh, in Autun. You can see the four uh, paths, two for cars, uh, for, uh, for cars, for vehicles, uh, and two for um, pedestrians. This is the side you can see when you are outside uh, the, the city. This is the side you can see when you're inside uh, the, the city. The part uh, we will see is here and here. If we look uh, closer this, uh, this part, we can see a line here and another, another line here. You see the difference between this part, very neat, and this one uh, very uh, rough. There was uh, an archaeological uh, survey monitoring in this part here, and uh, the archaeologist uh, Yannick Labonne found a small uh, wall there. Uh, at least preserved of uh, four, uh, four uh, courses. This wall was perpendicular to the line, uh, to, the, to the gate. And it was in the same line that uh, the area of the wall I show you uh, in the last uh, slide. We have the same thing. 
here. Here you can see this line. Here. Um, sorry. This uh, area in the wall with the roof uh, treatment, the presence here of a wall uh, discovered by archaeologists indicates the uh, presence of a courtyard like in uh, La Porte d'Auguste in Nîmes. And we can prove it because uh, some uh, archaeologists, some antiquarians in the past saw uh, the structure when they still uh, existed. Uh, we have an uh, Italian uh, antiquarian, uh, Scipione Maffei, uh, um, Veronese uh, antiquarian. Uh, we um, the, he, he, he came to Autun with his um, assistant, Jean-François Seguier, uh, which is a very important uh, scholar of Nîmes. And he, he writes, at a few yards from this gate, there's in the middle of the street, a section of column, which seems to have been placed formerly between the stones of the pavement. It answers the pilaster which is between the two gates and is thus between the two paths. There will have been an inscription, but at present the stone is eaten away and shrunk it. So you see something in the uh, inside part of the city. And we have another uh, person uh, who lived in Autun, uh, Roni who said the road was then dug up to smooth the slope and the excavation revealed the foundation of a considerable building situated in the interior of the town at a short distance from the gates which remained on the same plan and in the same direction. This monument was also opened by two arcades. It was never known to what kind of building these ruins belonged. Some architects who were present at these excavations thought that it could have been another triumphal arch, a gate, placed in front of the first one and which was part of it. All the more so as the second facade would have contributed to make it square. Then this portico would have presented a sumptuous majesty. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, they, they can't understand this is an urban gate with a courtyard because uh, the port d'Auguste in Nîmes wasn't still uh, discovered. She was still integrated in the uh, royal castle in Nîmes. So they had uh, no point of comparison, but they saw the uh, courtyard. You can also compare this gate with other gates, uh, gates in Avanche in uh, Switzerland, uh, in uh, Torino, Turin, in the uh, north of Italy, uh, of, uh, in uh, Concordia, in the north of Italy, in uh, uh, Gallia Cisalpina. And when you have gates with four uh, paths, very often, you have a courtyard, an inner courtyard. It can be circular or square. Uh, here you are in Torino, uh, Porta Palatina, uh, Porta de Cumana. But you have, you can see the beginning of the walls of the courtyard. And it's the same in Nîmes, Porte d'Auguste, and in Autun with the Porte, uh, Porte d'Arou. So we have to propose a new restoration of the Aru gate with a courtyard exactly in the same uh, typology than the uh, Porte d'Auguste in Nîmes. Uh, I will go, uh, I will uh, <laughs> move faster. Uh, I show you uh, 
uh, two temples, a temple in Autun, le temple de Janus, so-called uh, Janus temple. You can see here, and uh, you have ici a proposal of uh, restoration. This kind of, um, of temple is very different from the Roman temple, uh, like the Maison Carré. Uh, this temple, the, the cella, the, the room for the god, uh, is a high tower. And you have uh, all around a gallery. This is a Roman temple. This is a Roman temple because we are in the Roman period. We have a lot of these tem Roman temples in uh, north, north uh, of, of Gaul, east of Gaul, uh, in Germany. Uh, but you, you don't find this kind of, uh, of temple in the south of France, in the south of Gaul, or in Italy. In south of France, in south of Gaul, or in Italy, you find a lot of temples like uh, the Maison Carré. Uh, this temple is dedicated to the two uh, Caesares, Lucius Caesar, Caius Caesar, the grandsons of Augustus. And uh, this temple was uh, located on the Forum of Nîmes. And is, this shape is quite similar to uh, the temples we know in Rome in the same period, the temple of Apollon Palatine, uh, the temple of uh, Mars Ultor and the Forum, uh, Augustian Forum. Uh, all, all these temples are from the Augustian period. Uh, they are placed on the large uh, podium with an axial access uh, with stairs. And in Nîmes, the temple uh, dedicated to the two Caesares, the Maison Carré on the Forum, is not the only place dedicated to the imperial cult. Uh, you have the sanctuary of the Fontaine, the Fontaine, uh, which is uh, at the origin of the creation of Nîmes, uh, at the time of the Volcae uh, uh, Arikomiki. The spring is here, and uh, in the Augustian period, uh, 25 before Christ, uh, you have a dynastic sanctuary uh, which is built to honor the imperial uh, family. The Temple de Diane, the Temple of Diana, is here. You have two stairs uh, in a shape of a half a circle there and there. You have here an altar to make the sacrifice and a porticus triplex with a monumental uh, access uh, here. You can see it because uh, it's uh, ruined uh, nowadays, but there was a little theater uh, in this complex. And it's called the uh, Augusteum. Uh, or the Les Jardins de la Fontaine, uh, because it's uh, around the spring at the origin of Nîmes. Uh, the, the Gauls uh, believed, uh, honored here, uh, a god, uh, Mimosus, which gave his name uh, to the city of Nîmes. To conclude, I will uh, show um, a, a little things about the Roman legacy in, in modern Nîmes and uh, Autun. Uh, you can see the, the Maison Carré, the temple dedicated to the Caesares. And uh, the Maison Carré uh, was used as a model for the uh, courthouse, the Palais de Justice uh, of Nîmes with uh, uh, six columns, uh, the same, uh, the, it's, it's really an architectural copy. And there are a lot of, um, of buildings in Nîmes inspired by the architecture uh, of the uh, Maison Carré. 
Another example is the NIM train station. Uh, you can see uh, here, if you, uh, Sorry. You have the, the, the station of NIM and uh, the monumental facade uh, is about uh, 100 meters long with two, uh, two uh, levels of uh, arcades. And it's uh, a uh, neoclassical style inspired uh, by the Roman amphitheater of uh, NIM. You have in him a lot of fountains with a crocodile and the, the palm of the crocodile. Here is the, the spring, le, Les Jardins de la Fontaine, uh, the spring of Nîmes in the um, dynastic complex, the Augusteum of Nîmes. You have here the, the two uh, uh, stairs, half circle stairs, and you can see here the temple of Diana and here a palm tree. So uh, the, the, the presence of uh, a palm tree here is not uh, natural, is not uh, antique. Uh, it's a way for the contemporary city of Nîmes to uh, inscribe itself in the Roman past, like in the uh, Roman coin of uh, Augustian period. Uh, you have also um, this um, un, this square, uh, Antonin, uh, Antoninus Pius Square. Uh, in fact, the, the paternal family of the emperor Antoninus Pius came from Nîmes. And in the 19th century, a square with a, a statue of this local celebrity who ruled over the world uh, was uh, built and it contributed to the local pride. Uh, uh, and you have this uh, poem, uh, uh, the inhabitant, inhabitant of Nîmes is half Roman. His city was also the city of seven hills. A beautiful sun uh, shines on great ruins. And one of these children was named Antonin, Antoninus. And a quick look uh, at a district located between the medieval center here and the Jardin de la Fontaine here. Uh, and we uh, can see that uh, the whole district bears the Roman names of emperors, uh, Trajan, uh, Agrippa, Adrien, Titus, Vespasien, Nerva, Plotine, Auguste, Antonin. Another statue uh, was bought by the city of Nîmes in the um, 20th uh, century. Uh, it's a copy of the famous statue of uh, Augustus from Prima Porta. And it was installed in an interesting way in the courtyard of the Port d'Auguste. So the, um, the Romanity of uh, Nîmes is also a contemporary uh, construction. Even the football team uh, of Nîmes, uh, as uh, is um, nickname is uh, Crocodiles. And you have here the head of the crocodile. You have here the round of the arena, of the amphitheater, and the, the arches of the uh, amphitheater. And you can see here the same uh, shape than the uh, medieval uh, city of Nîmes. So um, the, there is no doubt that Rome has many children, uh, more or less uh, marked by his, its uh, heritage. Uh, in the provinces of Gaul, as well as in the other provinces. And I hope, uh, despite uh, <laughs> my uh, English, 
uh, I will have I give you the desire to, to, to cross the channel to visit Nîmes and uh, its new uh, Musée de la Romanité, which is here, uh, to visit Autun, which is constructing a new museum here in an old um, uh, prison, Le Musée Rollin. You can see here and you can see here. Uh, in Autun, the new museum is being set up in a former prison with a circular uh, plan, while in Nîmes, the Musée de la Romanité uh, has adopted a rectangular shape uh, that contrasts with the curves of the amphitheaters of Nîmes, a few meters away. Uh, in my opinion, it's a success, successful uh, architectural uh, face-off uh, between antiquity and present, and the, the, modern, the modernity of the glass um, facade uh, can uh, continue to reflect uh, the, the, the arena, the amphitheater, the heritage of Rome, uh, the heritage that Rome uh, has left uh, to us. Thank you very much for your uh, patience. Uh, thank you very much, Vivian. That was very interesting. We have a lot of messages uh, to say thank you and congratulations on your presentation. Uh, we have questions as well. Yes, yes. Uh, so I will try. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have James who is asking that, is it possible that the Temple de Janus was attributed to Janus because of its design? Um, and he adds that the Temple has similarities in shape to the Ark of Janus in Rome. Um, okay, yeah, yeah I, uh, it's, a, it's a good point, but uh, the Temple of Janus is here. And uh, we have only uh, two walls on the four, but it's only a part of the entire temple because you have to, uh, to add uh, a gallery, uh, a squared gallery. Um, so the, the, the parallel with the uh, Janus arch in Rome is not um, correct. Uh, for for that uh, reason, why did they call this temple Temple of uh, Janus? It's because uh, the local uh, name of the um, district is uh, Genetois. Genetois, uh, because uh, les, les Genets uh, are flowers uh, in French. Uh, it's um, a field of Genet, a field of these flowers, and it's called the Genetois. But you have, um, and it's very common in uh, the uh, 16th century, you have scholars who uh, invent um, etymologies, and he said that Genetois is for Jani Tecto, Le, the Tectum of Janus, but it's uh, completely uh, forged, uh, inv invented. Thanks, Bibian. It was a wonderful presentation of two cities. I have in my list to visit both. And I have a, another question from Jeanette Sykes. And she said, why were the Roman building in Nîmes so well preserved compared to some other places? including Buxton in the Peak District where I live, uh, and like Manchester, we have uh, nothing left. There is a part of luck. Uh, um, there is also um, a phenomenon, I think, uh, which is uh, linked to the size the very big size of these uh, two uh, cities. I will found the, the maps. As you see on both uh, Nîmes map and Autun, uh, the map of Autun, the map of Nîmes, 
you have a big difference between the place uh, which is still uh, uh, inhabited and the Roman uh, circle of walls. Here, you have the Augustodunum city walls. But in the uh, 16th century, here were the inhabitants in this place called Marchau. And here, around the cathedral of Saint Lazare. And all this place, which, in, uh, which is intramuros uh, in Roman times, is empty. So uh, there are a lot of destruction in the place still uh, where the people still live because they can uh, they, 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 they take the, the stone uh, to, to make other constructions. But all these places very, uh, with, are, um, are too far to be uh, destructed. And in him, it's a little bit the same situation because you have a difference be between this wall, uh, medieval ones, and the Roman wall, which is wider. And um, in Nîmes, uh, we know that the, the population can uh, fit in the amphitheater in case of danger. All the population in the uh, eighth uh, century. So uh, the Roman town of Nîmes and Autun were very bigger than uh, the medieval ones. And it can explain uh, why they, they could not uh, destroy all. <laughs> they could not use all the stones, all the buildings. You have another thing, uh, for example, for Autun, uh, on the Port d'Arou, uh, in the uh, medieval period, uh, I don't know uh, if you see, there was a chapel of Notre Dame d'Arou. Uh, um, build against the the gate and you can't you can destroy the gate if you are a chapel of notre dame uh, on it it's the same for la porte saint andré there was a church uh, for saint andré uh, uh, in the flanking tower and it protects uh, it protected the, the gate Thank you, Vivian. It was a very interesting answer, I thought. Uh, and we have another question from Janet, who is asking what would have been sacrificed at the altar in Nîmes? So I guess which animals were sacrificed in Nîmes? It's a tough question. <laughs> um, it can be a, 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 lot, of, a lot of things. Uh, from fruit uh, to uh, to uh, a big number of animals, um, the entire place uh, of the Jardin de la Fontaine was uh, completely rebuilt in the 18th century. Uh, so we have a very few uh, remains of the uh, Roman. Um, um, complex. So it's difficult to, to answer uh, precisely. Uh, it's an altar and uh, on an altar you can sacrifice uh, whatever you, you, you want uh, in order to, 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 to speak uh, with, the, with the gods. Well, thanks Vivian. We have uh, another question from Kinjiro. Well, it's two questions. The first one is, what language did the people speak in, I think, in, in Autumn and, and Nimes? And the second one, 
Is there any records or artifacts showing communication between Nimes and Autumn in the Roman time? Um, which language uh, they speak? They speak uh, Latin because we are in the western part of the Roman Empire, but um, um, they also use uh, Greek uh, because uh, we know in Autun uh, there is a schools, uh, les écoles Ménienne, uh, Ménien schools, uh, Tacit, uh, the, the Roman uh, historian Tacitus uh, speaks uh, about uh, this, uh, it's uh, like a, a university. Uh, and uh, we have a, a lot of a lot. We have uh, remains of um, um, Greek culture in Autun. Uh, it's not for uh, all the world population, uh, but the elites uh, in Autun, like in, in Rome, uh, are very interested in uh, Greek culture. Um, we can imagine uh, they continue to 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 know to speech uh, in uh, Gallic, uh, but we don't uh, we don't have a lot of um, inscriptions. Uh, the the official language is Latin. In Autun, like in uh, as in uh, in Nîmes. Uh, the second question was um, about the links uh, between the two cities. Um, it's not very far, even if it's another province. Uh, there are no particular evidence uh, that uh, attest uh, this uh, this um, link, but um, it's not uh, another world. Uh, it's uh, it's not so far, and uh, we can imagine that a, a lot of people, uh, uh, merchants uh, and uh, Roman citizens, uh, who can travel. Yes, it's possible, uh, but there are no archaeological evidence of, of that. Uh, even if the Port d'Arou is very similar to the Port d'Auguste, they are not the same. We can say it's the same architect, for example. All right, thank you, Vivian. Uh, and we have another question from Tony, who is asking, who is saying first, uh, it was not until uh, 1882 that law protecting, protecting archaeology was introduced into the UK. When was such leg legislation introduced in France? And I, because I had a question as well for you, and that's a good transition actually, because I read an article in the Journal de Saône-et-Loire uh, saying that in uh, 2019, the Temple de Janus was bought by a Chinese uh, billionaire who wanted to build a, a hotel uh, on the site of the temple. So do you have any uh, maybe information about it and about the law that are protecting uh, archaeological sites in France? For the second part of the question, <laughs> I can uh, easily answer because uh, I'm, I am uh, born on the 1st of April. And uh, <laughs> it's the day uh, we make a prank. And the date of the article of the Journal of saône loire is very near to the 1st of April. April so it's uh, a fake news. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a, a joke. So uh, everything okay for the Temple of Janus, uh, he was not bought by a Chinese uh, in <laughs> investor. Um, for the, uh, the first part of the question uh, about the, the, the protect, protecting law uh, about uh, heritage, um, in France, uh, 
the um, it's uh, 1836 uh, 1840 for the first law uh, which protects the monument historic the historical uh, monuments and the the Roman buildings of Autun and Nîmes are all in this first list. Thanks, Vivienne. We have a, one last question by Suzanne Frey Cooper. And she said, I am intrigued uh, by the identical surface and length of the walls of both cities founded around the same time. Do you have an explanation? Also, some of the surface intramuros seems uh, not to have been occupied in Nimes and Autumn. Just uh, as for example in Avenge, we have discussed sometime these empty spaces for Aventicum, but did not come a satisfying conclusion. Thank you, Susan, for this uh, question. Uh, yes, it's very, very true, and it's the same situation than in Avanche. Um, it's impossible to imagine that the entire city was uh, fully uh, built. Um, the, the city of Autun is uh, created in the, in, the very, in the middle of the Augustian period, and first of all, they build uh, the walls. First, first of first, the gates, then towers, walls, aqueducts, uh, streets, and it's a very long uh, work uh, because we have to imagine half a century uh, in order these first uh, uh, buildings uh, are, um, are built. Uh, to, to, to build this first building. And uh, there are also places to uh, um, uh, artisana, uh, to um, industry, uh, to uh, the pottery, a lot of things. We need space. Uh, uh, it's uh, activities we, which uh, um, um, uh, polluant, uh, um, which uh, dis dis disturbs, uh, add a bad smell, uh, this kind of thing, and they they have enough place to uh, to uh, to to all uh, all uh, exist. Why six kilometers in both uh, Nîmes and Autun? I think it's uh, it's uh, um, uh, a hazard. It's uh, <laughs> it's an hazard. I think we say in I don't know. Well. But well, Susan no, speaks, no, yes. speaks very very well French, so she she will understand. <laughs> it's by chance. By chance. It's yes. It's it's by chance. I think because in Autun, um, the six kilometer perimeters. Uh, uh, is the exact uh, size of the natural um, plateau of Autun. So it's six kilometers is not a choice. It's um, imposed by the topography, the natural uh, topography. All right. Thank you, Vivian. Uh, thank just you. before saying goodbye, thank you very much for this um, presentation. Um, uh, we just want to make a little promotion for our next events. So on behalf of the Alliance Française, uh, we are organizing a talk on the 18th of June uh, about the relations of France and Britain. And we want to go beyond uh, the appearances of those relations, uh, especially now. And we have the pleasure to receive a UK diplomat, Peter Boxer, who worked in France, for France, and with France during his career. So I'm putting you the link uh, of the event uh, in the chat. And I think the Instituto Cervantes as well has a very beautiful program for uh, the next few weeks. 
Well, thank you, Rally. Thanks very much for joining us in this wonderful event, exploring the Roman heritage across Europe. Thank you, our partners, uh, Alliance Francaise and Societa Dante Ligieri, and also to, uh, thanks to Alej Jose Alejandro and Vivian for the amazing lectures. Well, uh, here in, in the Instituto Cervantes, our cultural events continue during this uh, month. Um, for example, next Friday, we have the conference Revisi Revisiting Sericulture and Silk Production in the Spanish Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. It's an European program. They name it Silk Now. And the lecture is going to be doc Dr. Ana Cabrera La Fuente. You can find more information in, in the chat box. I'm, I'm going to leave you the, the link. And also, all our, you can find all our activities in our website, manchester.cervantes.es. Uh, manchester Thank you very much and, and enjoy the evening. Just a word from the Società Dante Alighieri. We have a few events in the next few months about Dante because it's the 700th anniversary. So June, we should have on the 10th an important presentation in cooperation with the Rylands Library, but I don't have all the details yet and more to come before the end of the year. I suggest you, if you can, to follow Facebook. So on the Facebook, you will have all the information that you need, or you can contact us and we will send you the information. Thank you again to everybody, to the fantastic uh, speakers and uh, many places to visit when we will be able to travel.